Zero Mode Coders. My name is Sean, and I will be your instructor today. We are watching Lesson 9 of the Python for Beginner series on the Coding with Sean channel. In this lesson, we will learn about only two things. They are functions and dictionaries. As for my beginning side notes, they are not too much other than pay special attention to functions because they are very important. With that said, let's begin. Some tasks need to be performed multiple times within a program. Rather than rewrite the same code in multiple places, a function may be defined using the DEF keyword. Function definitions may include parameters providing data input to the function itself. Functions may return a value using the return keyword, followed by the value to return. That is a simplified definition of what a function is. And now that you've heard it, let's put in the code. Go ahead and put def, and then my function followed by parentheses, and then put an x inside that parentheses pair, and then put a colon, and underneath it put return x plus 1. And if you have written that, that itself is actually a function. You wouldn't have to do anything else to make that a function. However, this isn't actually going to do anything because we haven't told Python to do anything with the function. And if we run this program, we can get visual evidence that we that Python will not do anything with this because while this is a proper function we haven't told Python to do anything with it. So let's tell Python to do something with it. Go ahead and skip a line or two and put a print statement and then a pair of parentheses and inside that put our function which is my function exactly the same way as before another pair of parentheses and inside the other pair of parentheses put two. Go ahead and pause the video and guess what we're going to get. If you've done it, let's go ahead and run this. And we get 3. And the reason for this is because this 2 actually represents x. And as we've told Python in this line, to return x plus 1. If we change this to say 2 and run this program, we would get 4. Because obviously 2 plus 2 is 4. And so on and so on. And you can really adjust this to make it like what you want. So such as you could change this to... A time symbol and it would still work the same. We get 4 because 2 times 2 is 4. And to really show that this actually works, we could put 3 and we get 6 as expected, etc. etc. So let's go ahead and revert this to plus 1. And let's talk, let me talk, tell, talk about something. So let's talk about something where we don't really have to put any code. Let's talk about calling functions. Python uses simple syntax to invoke or quote unquote call a pre existing function. And a function can be called by writing the name of it, followed by parentheses. So quite simply, just we put my function and then a pair of parentheses. That's how you call it. That's it. And that's actually quite simple, but it is very, very important to know how you call the function because that's what that's how you really try to find something with the function. So for example, when we called it right here, we use this pair of parentheses in order to call my function. So this right here is exactly the same as this, and that is why we always 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 add parentheses after when we're trying to call our function because it's very very important to add that pair of parentheses. Let's talk about function indentation. Python uses indentation to identify blocks of code. Code within the same block should be indented at the same level. A Python function is one type of code block. All code under a function declaration should be indented to identify as part of the function. There can be additional indentation within a function to handle other statements, such as for and if, so long as the lines are not indented less than the first line of the function code. And what that is essentially saying is that all lines of code that are underneath a code block and are indented will be part of the code block. And let's put this in the code. Go ahead and make a function, def function, and then a pair of parentheses, and put number inside that pair of parentheses then put a colon, and then put print inside the function. And the reason this is inside the function is because of this indentation. This indentation right here means that Python will recognize this as part of the code block, which is this. And do note that anything indented within this code block, no matter how many lines down, will be part of that function. And to get out of an actual code block, all you have to do is hit the backspace or the delete. 
and that will bring you back to the wall and once you're back to this wall right here that means that you are out of a code block and that's really it for function indentation there are quite a few other things with functions and we were not going to go into terribly large amount of depth today because we're going to save that for our more of intermediate and advanced things because some of these things that we can do as functions are actually very very advanced and very very impressive but they can also be very very difficult so we're going to move on to something that's a little bit more reasonable for us and let's do let's do function arguments so parameters in python are variables or placeholders for the actual values that the function needs when the function is called these values are placed passed in as arguments so for example let's make a function let's put def sales and then a pair of parentheses and a grocery store and then item on sale and then cost and then a colon print grocery store and then plus is selling and then another plus and that is going to be item on sale and then another plus and then we're going to put four and then another plus in cost wonderful okay and then go ahead and skip down and we're going to put sales go ahead and take actually go ahead and go out of our indentation so make sure the indentation's out and put sales the farmers market and then a semicolon then toothpaste and then a comma and then one dollar okay and this right here is basically a function argument so in this example itself the arguments passed into the function dot sales are the the farmers market toothpaste and one dollar which correspond to the parameter of the grocery store item on sale and cost and this is really how we incorporate these different things into functions there are many many other things we can do with functions including keyword arguments and returning multiple values parameters as local variables global variables and other things so let's go ahead and try returning multiple variables so python functions are able to return multiple variables or rather multiple values using one return statements all values that should be returned are listed after the return keyword and are separated by commas so let's do something go ahead and make a function def square point and then parentheses and inside those parentheses put x comma y comma z and then a colon and then x squared equals x times X. And then go down y squared. Whoops. Good lord. Y squared equals y times y. Oh, good lord. I have messed up. I'm sorry. Go down and then z squared and equals z times z. Okay, and then now we're going to ask Python to return these three values. So return x squared, y squared, and z squared. Okay, then we can put 3 squared. Four squared, five squared equals 
square point. And then parentheses, 3, comma, 4, comma, 5. Okay, let's run this program. And we don't get anything. And this is because all, we, all we've done is made two separate things. We haven't really assigned any type of value to x squared, y squared, or z squared. So let's see. Let's just say that we printed 3 squared. And what do you think we're going to get? Pause the video and guess. Run the program. And we get 9. And with this, we pull to a close for functions. Functions are very important, and as I said earlier, we will continue to do functions throughout this series, and we will always have functions in Python. I mean, guys, functions are one of the most important things with Python. They're continually getting more advanced and advanced as Python developers create more and more versions of Python, and once Python 4 or even 5 come out, we'll see very advanced types of functions. And that is what we have to learn for today. And as I said, again, I'll say it one more time due to how important it is. We will continue to learn functions throughout the series. And let's go ahead and move on to dictionaries. Python dictionaries. A Python dictionary is an unordered collection of items. It contains data as a set of key, essentially value pairs. That obviously is a definition of what a Python dictionary is, and that is our next topic. A dictionary in Python is a lot different than a dictionary in real life. When you think about a dictionary in real life, you would imagine a book that gives you the definition, the language of origin, and other stuff, and other information for a word. That is not necessarily exactly what, Python, what a Python dictionary does, but it actually does something that's a little similar to it in some ways. So the syntax for a Python dictionary begins with a left curly brace, ends with a right curly brace, and contains zero or more key value items separated by commas. The key is separated from a value with a colon. So for example, let's say we have a roster, and in the roster, let's say we have just two people. We have Q1, and that, and a colon, and then Sean, and then a comma, and then uh, quotes again, Q2, another colon, and then U. And you can go ahead and put your name there if that's what you want to. And that actually is a perfectly good dictionary. That is a Python dictionary in its true form. Now, obviously, if we do run this program, we're not going to get anything because we haven't told Python to do anything with that. But moving on, we have dictionary value types. So Python allows the values in the dictionary to be any type string integer, a list, another dictionary, a boolean, etc. However, keys must be an immutable data type, such as strings, numbers, or tuples. In, in this block, which we're going to make right now, is going to be dictionary equals curly brace 1, and then you can put 1, colon, hello, put another and a comma, and then 2, And then another colon, true, and then a comma, and then three, and then another colon, and then a regular bracket. And in that, we're going to put one, two, and three then another colon, and then four, and then another colon, and then a curly brace, and inside it, fun, and then a colon, and then a addition. Okay. And then five, Point zero colon five point five. Okay, that is a bit of a more complex and a little bit special of a dictionary. It's obviously a lot longer than our initial dictionary, and it does have a lot more capability because these are really it's, and it's really a good way to show the value types. So there's numbers, there's tuples, there's a you know floats, integers, a lot of things, and a, a lot of as long as the, it is an immutable data type it is permittable to use inside of a dictionary. 
So let's talk about accessing and writing data in a dictionary. So values in a Python dictionary can be accessed by placing the key within square brackets next to the dictionary. Values can be written by placing key within square brackets next to the dictionary and using the assignment operator equals. If the key already exists, the old value will be overwritten. Attempting to access a value with a key that does not exist will cause a key error. So let's do another example. You can go ahead and erase what you've written. And then my dictionary equals curly brace song estranged comma artist colon guns and roses okay and then we're going to put a print statement print my dictionary and then curly or rather regular brace song and then we're going to put my dictionary and then a bracket song equals paradise city if we run this we're going to get a strand because we have that as our main song in the uh, dictionary in our regular in our original dictionary and because of that that is what's printed as song this line right here shows song meaning extrans and we have put our print statement to my dictionary and song in particular and this dictionary we could change it i mean if we put artist here and ran this naturally we'd get guns and roses because that's what's over here and there's, I mean, you can do a lot of this. I mean, there's not really a limit to how much things you can put in a dictionary. You could put a million, a trillion, a billion. Now, this would, if you did have that enormous amount of numbers, you would obviously need a very, very powerful computer. But you can put a lot of things, essentially. That's what I'm trying to say. You can put a lot of things in a Python dictionary. Okay, there, as we've learned, we can use our dot methods like dot append and dot whatnot to use these. And you, these are actually applicable to dictionaries. You can use them to edit dictionaries. So let's try the get method for a dictionary. So obviously, as we've learned, Python provides a get method to access a dictionary in particular value if it exists. This method takes the key as the first argument and an optional default value as the second argument, and it turns the value for the specified key if key is in the dictionary. If the second argument is not specified and key is not found, then none is returned. Let's put some of this into code. Go ahead and make a variable name, and then the equal sign, and then a curly brace, and then enter to go to the next line, and then put name one, colon, John, comma, name two, colon, Stephen, name three, colon, Joseph. Okay, then we're gonna actually use our get method by putting x equals name dot get and then we can put one of our names so let's just say name one and then print x okay if we run this here we're gonna get John because obviously John is name one if we put name two we get Stephen name three Joseph, and if we, if we had more, we could just get on and on and on. And part of this is why Python dictionaries are so incredibly powerful. They can help you get, they can help you take massive amounts of data and get the specific part which you want from that data very quick and easily. And there are some other things we can do with, that, with dictionaries that are not necessarily related to them, but are still useful in some cases. So if we just put name, which doesn't exist, it would give us none because there's nothing in the dictionary called none. And if you look for something in the dictionary, a regular dictionary, you obviously wouldn't, if you didn't find anything, you'd just not find it. And that's really what it's doing us here. It's really just giving us a warning that there's nothing in that dictionary that's, you know, what we put. Now, the, one of the things, though, with this is that, obviously, code needs everything to be perfect. And if you misspell or something, it would be fine if you were, say, 
start searching something in Google, but if, when you're coding, everything pretty much has to be perfect. So make sure that you don't misspell anything if you are trying to use a dictionary. And okay, let's try some of the other one more thing. If we we can also put a comma after name or rather yeah name, and then we can put name doesn't exist. And if we run this, we're gonna get name doesn't exist because we're really telling Python to do this if this doesn't work. If we had name one here though, we'd get John because that does it work. And if we put, for example, name one here, name twenty two, and we just let's just change it to name eleven, and we put name doesn't exist here, and then we run the program. We're actually going to get nothing here because, again, remember that Python does need are a little bit specific to what you're trying to get. So Python will not allow more than three gets inside of a dictionary. So if one is flawed, it will go for the other, and you cannot add another one. If we change this to name two, it would give us name two, obviously, because it doesn't necessarily give us this one, obviously, because it is trying to not get a name on the second one. It'll tell you. It'll literally print name two or whatever you put here. So if you put you know, coding what Sean is awesome here, and run this. You're gonna get coding what Sean is awesome because it's just gonna print literally print whatever is here. If this is invalid, of course. And that's really how the get method works. And let's try one more thing or two today with dictionaries. Let's talk about the pop method for dictionaries in Python. So Python dictionaries can remove key value pairs with the dot pop method. The method takes as a is, excuse me, the method takes a key as an argument and removes it from the dictionary. At the same time, it also returns the value that it removes from the dictionary. So let's try the pop method out. So go ahead and take this out and let's replace this with computer and then the equal sign, and then curly braces. And let's put cheapest, and then a colon, and then windows. And then a comma, and then most expensive, and then we can put Mac. And then another comma and Google and then we can put Chromebook okay so the pop method makes it very interesting and very very useful method I must say this is probably one of the most important methods to know when you are using dictionaries in Python so we can put computer dot pop and let's just pop out cheapest and then print computer okay if we do this we're going to actually not get Mac because or rather sorry we're not going to get Windows because we have told Python to take out the cheapest one or rather the whatever is representing the cheapest so since we put cheapest it's going to take out Windows now do note that the pop method is not going to actually alter the original thing in any way so if we take this pop method out and run this again we're gonna get all three because and that's really the important thing with the pop method the pop method is really awesome because it doesn't alter the original thing in any way but it gives you an altered version and that can be super useful when you don't want to change anything but you want to see what it'll look like when it's changed and the value of the removed item when you remove something is the value of the pop method do note that that is a very 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 important thing to know but other than that, we're really done with this lesson. Great job making it this far. Great job making it this far, both in the lesson and in the series. And I really do appreciate you guys being here, subscribing, liking the video, disliking the video even if that's what you think it deserves, commenting, uh, feedback, sharing, all of that. Really, really kind of you to do that. And thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you so much. Hi.